Welcome to the Zone Coaches Spotlight. I'm your host, Andrew Romanella, back for a second edition. Today, joining me is our my friend and our coach and instructor for infield and hitting, Coach Steve Nickerack. Steve, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Coach Steve was drafted by the Chicago White Sox, played for the New Jersey Jackals in the Can-Am League and for the St. Paul Saints in the American Association, just recently completing his season with the St. Paul Saints. So to get started, Steve, just tell us a little bit about the feeling of getting drafted, signing a pro contract, and kind of that dream of the little kid inside of you coming alive and to fruition. It was definitely a lifelong dream. Um, it was something that I had dreamt about my entire life. Uh, I had worked hard to achieve, and it almost came as a little bit of a surprise. It wasn't guaranteed. I didn't think I, I had a 100% chance of getting drafted my senior year of college, um, and it was coming down to either play baseball or get a real job and uh, I ended up getting drafted in the 32nd round I think it was 981st overall in 2012 and uh, it came as a complete surprise um, I'd been out there for a pre-draft workout about a month earlier and did really really well so I thought that uh, my best shot was with them and uh, it turned out I, I, I was fortunate enough to hear my name called well and you know it's pretty easy for the first round second round draft pick to know what the process is like. What's it like for the guy in the 31st, 32nd round, knowing that this isn't a guarantee and i got to put so much extra work in to have this thing happen? It's nerve-wracking, um, especially because uh, your family, your friends, everybody's rooting for you. Um, you don't want to let yourself down. You don't want to let anybody else down. And uh, you would put all this time and effort for the last 22 years of your life. Um, you know you're a senior. You know your, your baseball career could be over if you don't hear your name called. So. It was a big sigh of relief when I heard my name called. Now, do you feel, and this is kind of a, an opinionated question, do you feel like you were almost like an underdog? You know, I know you have the size, and being your friend, I know what you can do, but the common person that doesn't know you, yeah, Steve's a 6'3", it's a big kid with a great arm, but did you still feel like you were like an underdog? Oh, absolutely, um, especially when I, when I got to spring training. Um, I was a low man on the totem pole. I had worked my way through college. Uh, I had been the freshman and the sophomore and worked my way up. Uh, I was now a senior, one of, one of the captains, one of the leaders, and one of the guys that was looked up to on the team. And now all of a sudden you get drafted and you go to an organization that you're not really relevant until you prove yourself. Um, so def definitely I felt like low man and uh, I need to restart and reprove myself all over again. That's awesome. And has that kind of helped you? outside of baseball, you know, in, in work and in, in family situations, just understanding that, hey, when you're the guy at the bottom and you got to crawl and scratch and do everything you can to get towards the top, you know, that mentality can really help you in a lot of other places. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, you get out of it what you put in. Um, baseball is a very humbling game. Um, it, there's plenty of guys that work just as hard as I do that never got the opportunity that I did. Um, but when you're given a chance, you got to make the absolute most of it. Uh, you never want to look back and, and say, oh, I could have done this or I could have done that. Um, and I think that goes for everything in life, whether it's school, whether it's your job. Um, if you put in the effort, I think uh, good things will come out. Now explain, once you were dropped by the White Sox, I'm sure it was kind of a chaotic time. Explain the transfer from the organization, the affiliated baseball, to independent baseball, and actually what positives that really probably brought to you. Well, I remember, I remember the day I got released, uh, my manager, Pete Rose Jr., called me and told me that they weren't bringing me back, and I was devastated. Um, I thought I was done. I was done with baseball. I was frustrated at the world. Um, and then an opportunity for independent ball came, and uh, I first signed with the Somerset Patriots in the Atlantic League, and that was just briefly. That was for the first month of the season before being released and sent to the New Jersey Jackals in the Can-Am League. But I think the biggest difference for me is guys cared more about winning as opposed to the individual aspect of the game. Um, when I was in the minor leagues, if you and I are buddies and we're competing for a job and the game's on the line, I might be the last person to admit it, but I can't necessarily root for you to, yeah. to succeed and, and kill it and, and move up past me. And I think that's the mindset that, that, that most of the guys that I played with had. Um, it was more for the individual as opposed to the team. And uh, when I got the independent ball, both with the, the New Jersey Jackals and the St. Paul Saints, I mean, it was all about the team. Um, and I thought that was pretty cool and it was, it was exciting. It kind of, kind of brought me back to, back to college a little bit. Um, so, I mean, I, cool. I loved it. It was a great experience. That's cool because you don't 
at, for a guy like me, you know, I've been in the clubhouse a little bit, but not as a player. So it's interesting to hear that there is that much of a difference between affiliated baseball and independent baseball, mm -hmm. which kind of brings me to my next question, which is, do you feel like the talent level is just as good as what you were playing with affiliate ball? Because from what I've seen, I don't see a big drop off. I mean, yeah, once you're at the major leagues, there's obviously a difference there, but single A, double A, triple A, I feel like a lot of those guys are sprinkled throughout independent baseball, and that makes it a whole lot tougher. Definitely, I, uh, I think it depends on what league you're in. Um, I think the Can-Am League, the American Association, the Atlantic League, obviously, uh, there's plenty of guys that should still be playing. Um, we had some guys that were in the big leagues last year, were in double A, triple A last year, uh, that could really play. And uh, I think the Atlantic League, more so than others, just because it's a more experienced league, um, the guys might be later on in their career. But there are some guys that I've played with that uh, if they got the right shot and the right opportunity and the right fit in an organization, I think they, they could be successful. And, and now explain your difference. What, what was the Jackals like, a hometown team in Jersey, to going to Minnesota and playing for the St. Saint Paul Saints, which is one of the top organizations, not just in independent baseball, but in all of baseball? Well, for the Jackals, it was great. Um, I got the chance to play in front of my family. I had been from Montana to Arizona to Tennessee, West Virginia, and I didn't get to see my family much, which was different for me because I'd seen them all through my high school and college career. And then uh, I got to play in front of them all season, right in, in uh, Montclair, and it was an awesome experience. I had all intentions of going back, and then I was traded two days before spring training started last year. And at first, I didn't know what to think about it. Um, then I looked, looked up the St. Saint Paul Saints a little bit, realized that they had one of the biggest fan bases out there, and they had just built a brand new $70 million stadium. So that was Pretty definitely nice. one of the positives. <laughs> we, we were treated very well out there. Um, that was a first-class organization. Um, I had some friends and family fly out to visit me out there, and that was probably one of the better experiences I've ever had awesome. in baseball. And, and what was it like kind of stepping on into that stadium for the first time and being like, man, $70, 70 million dollars this is fantastic I mean I can't even imagine what that was like your first day at BP ground ball it was beautiful I mean to be the first first people playing in that stadium was very exciting and the fan support I mean we averaged 8800 fans a night That's unbelievable. which you don't see really ever in the minor leagues I mean some triple-a teams will will sell out but I mean we doubled the attendance record and I mean, blew all the records out of the water. It was it was just a, it was a cool experience. They've always had the following, and now that they had the uh, the stadium to to seat everyone, it was it was jam packed. That's cool. Now, and for those of you, I'm sure most people watching this know who Steve Nickerak is, especially in the Zone Sports Academy family. So just to kind of explain how Zoned has kind of been in your life throughout this entire journey from different states to different organizations, and, and how that's kind of been important to you. Well, I grew up in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, and. Uh, I didn't even know about Zoned. Um, one of my buddies who went to Nazareth High School had been training here, and he invited me to come hit with him one time in the winter, and there was really nowhere else to go. So uh, I said, yeah, I'll jump in with you. We came down to Zoned, um, took a hitting lesson. This was in 2004, and I haven't left since. I have been here um, throughout my entire high school career, my college career. I had a college internship here, and then uh, it's been my off-season job from from the second I graduated. Um, the family and the atmosphere is, is the best around. Um, I think uh, our coaching staff speaks for itself. I think Duke puts together um, the best trained staff around. Uh, I mean, that's why everybody wants to train here. And I think it's, it's a great idea to, uh, to start our travel programs. I think we're gonna put together some great teams moving forward. And uh, I think it's gonna be the place to be. Um, I mean, we're starting to see it now with our last two signing days, two great events um, and a huge turnout. I think 33 and then 37 this year. That's incredible. And it's cool for the guys that have been here for a long time to see those, those kids maybe start in the rookie class, work their way up, and uh, 10 years later they're at signing day. And it's probably pretty cool for you because you were here for a lot of those guys 10 years, those, those girls 10 years, the whole nine yards. So kind of give us a rundown on your your – employment path I guess you could say here at Zone you know I know it started as an internship and obviously as a player taking lessons but now kind of what role have you developed into here and, and what is your main focus on a daily basis here at Zone? Um, I think first and foremost is, is private lessons um, uh, 
developing a class structure, um, running a lot of the classes and the programs, um, really working with you guys, working with the other coaches, and uh, making sure that our classes are, are, are run to the standard that we want them to, um, whether they be the middle and field classes, the rookie class, the minors class. Um, I really try to get involved with, with everything. I like to uh, I like to be involved in pretty much everything that's going on, um, whether it's the golf outing, signing day, special events. Uh, so other than just the private lessons and being in the cage, um, interacting with the kids, helping them out, giving them advice on, on college decisions, um, definitely classes, programs, and then like I said, special events. And it's, it's quite like a jack of all trades around here. It's fantastic. So, you know, and you, you speak about being with kids a lot. If you had a message for those kids, and it, yeah, being a pro baseball player, it's, it's a whole different animal, but just in general, what the game has given to you, um, you know, you see a seven, eight year old kid kind of struggling with wanting to work hard in a class. What, what would your message be to those kids about what baseball can do for them? And at, at some point in your career, whether it's, it's middle school, high school, college, or pro ball, even the big league, somebody's gonna tell you at some point, you're not good enough anymore. Um, hopefully that day never comes. Hopefully you're in the big leagues, and I say that to everybody, but uh, never take anything for granted. If you have a chance to play for a team, uh, come to a class, and your parents are, are giving you the opportunity to, to take private lessons and to play for our travel teams, I mean, there's a lot of people making sacrifices. So for the chance that you have to put on spikes, put on a uniform, and get out there and play, don't waste it. Don't, uh, don't take anything for granted, because like I said earlier, you don't want to look back and say, man, if I would have worked a little bit harder here, if I would have paid attention in class, I would have made my middle school team, or whatever it might be. But um, I think the staff here has a lot to offer, um, mentally, physically, mechanically, um, with a ton of experience. So I think uh, for those kids that are attending our speed and agility classes, velocity programs, our position-specific workouts, I mean, they're huge, and to, to take as much out of it as you can. Well, and, and that's a fantastic message to end with Steve. And for those of you that don't know about Steve or his journey, um, come into Zone, take a lesson with him. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. We've worked together personally. He's helped me a lot in my career, and he's somebody here at Zone that really does a lot. So I thank you for coming on. Thank uh, you. This is the Zone Coaches Spotlight. I'm Andrew Manella. Again, special thanks to our guest this week, Steve Nickerak. And make sure you follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much.